Hey Moonies, welcome to the Sailor Moon Fan Club Podcast. I'm your host, Victoria L. Johnson, and I'm here with Bandai Namco social marketing and community leader, Javier Rico. Hey, Javi! Hi! How are you, Victoria? I'm good! How are you? I'm doing well, sipping on coffee, enjoying a great conversation with you. <laughs> Yay! Oh man, coffee. I love coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Same. <laughs> yeah. I am super excited to speak to you. Um... Huge fan of Bandai Namco for, of course, all their Sailor Moon stuff, but also like other things that they do and all the other video yeah. games. Um, but uh, well, first, can I ask you, like, what exactly does a social marketing and community leader do? And like, what else do you do? Yeah, um, well, I mean, I, I, I definitely help um, manage a team of community managers and we pretty much... Um, um, as a unit, uh, I definitely ask them for a lot of help whenever we have to do anything. But and, and the, the short version of the answer would be that we pretty much run, manage all our social media channels and um, you know, do the day-to-day of what we need to do for our games and um, post and create content for social media. And then the other half, which is all community-based uh, work, um, you know, responding to people who interact with our content, um, uh, our live streams. We do that in our team as well. So we live stream Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, and we work with a lot of content creators to help promote our stuff. Um, and yeah, we pretty much talk uh, about games 24-7. And um, we just try to figure out what's the best way to communicate this to all our fans out there. And um, yeah, we were pretty much there on the front lines, seeing everyone's comments, good and bad, and um, <laughs> uh, work on on just making sure everything is is managed. So we 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 do like um, the main accounts that that we focus on are the Bandai Namco US like social media accounts and Twitch channel and YouTube channel. So um, that's us uh, and. Um, my team is, is the one in charge of it, and we all work together to kind of help uh, do all the things that we need to do on the games that we're, we're, we're focusing on. So me as a manager, just try to make sure everyone's okay um, and that they're hydrated <laughs> and doing, um, uh, doing well. And, and um, um, yeah, so I'm kind of like their coach and mentor, aside from some of the things that I do lead on my own from time to time. But... Um, uh, but as a leader, I kind of just help set the standards like, hey, here's the process to do X, Y, and Z. And hey, you're, you're stuck. Let's help you out to un- get you unstuck and um, <laughs> uh, figure out solutions. So that's pretty much my job. But most of the time, I'm just like, want to open up, you know, an excuse to talk about Sailor Moon with my team, which all of them pretty much <laughs> love Sailor Moon. So it's always a, a, a go-to topic whenever we feel like we're, we need to talk about something. So it, um, um, it's definitely felt all around in the team. That makes me so happy to know that they're <laughs> Sailor Moon fans. I mean, it makes sense, cause, but yeah. uh, still, you never know. Exactly. Uh, that's <laughs> awesome. Um, and Rebu don't know, Bandai Namco is the company that came up with Sailor Moon Drops a few years ago. I think about five years ago. And... Um, yeah, did you ever get a chance to play it? No, unfortunately, um, I haven't yet. <laughs> uh, I know we, we, there, the game exists. Um, uh, but, uh, so Bandai Namco has like a whole bunch of different, um, other sub, like, subsidiary companies and sister companies and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But for this particular one, since it's a mobile game, um, that's done and, and worked on by a different team. Um, and uh, so what we focus on are mostly all the console-based games, all the console and PC-based games. So anything that's on uh, Steam, Xbox, PlayStation, stuff like that. Um, but, you know, every now and then we do get a chance to chat with the mobile team and, and say hi to them. Um, but, um, uh, uh, I, I mean, I'm a big fan of mobile puzzle games. So um, I think I did yeah. download it in my phone, but it's just kind of been sitting there for a while, <laughs> haven't been touched, um, along with some other mobile games that I used to play a lot when I am just waiting, usually when I'm at Disneyland, when I, that was a thing, I'm waiting in line for mm-hmm. something, I would just pop that open and play some games. But um, yeah, that hasn't happened in over <laughs> some time now. 
Yeah, yeah. One day we'll be back to playing mobile games while we wait in line for rides at theme <laughs> parks. <Exactly. laughs> one day. Yes, one Hopefully day. Hopefully <laughs> next year. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, I was addicted to it <laughs> so when it came out. Yeah. And it was it was really fun. I also really like puzzle games because they're just like you can just kind of like mindlessly play it, but it like takes a little bit of your attention. Oh, for whereas, sure. Whereas like yeah. yeah. So it's really cool. Um have you ever got a chance to play any other Sailor Moon games? So, yeah, um the one game that I do remember and it was I had to actually get it um uh through an emulator. Mm-hmm. Um so it was the RPG Sailor Moon game, um, I think it was called Another Story. Yeah, and yeah. it was like for the Super Nintendo. Um, and um, I remember, I remember seeing it somewhere, and of course it was in Japanese. But then I dug around. Um, I mean, oh my goodness, this was like in two thousand something, two thousand three or four, um, and managed to find a fan subbed or translated version of the game. Um, and the way I kind of like figured out that it was a game was because I fell in love with the little tiny pixel animations and I thought they were created by someone at the time. Um, and so these were the little tiny, you know, the, the senshi characters of, in the game, but someone took the background off and there were little animated, um, a gifts of the 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 soldiers the senshi soldiers of just kind of like doing their attack powers and so like doing the digging of like where did this come from landed me to the game um and i think it wasn't until maybe like a year or two later where i finally got my hands on the game and started to play around with it and um i can't remember if i finished it but i do remember like my eyes were so wide of like oh my god this is an actual game because i think at the time i i i barely got my hands on the Sailor Stars season of the show so like I needed more content and more story and I didn't have anything else other than like what was on fans of VHS of Sailor Moon and of course the the dub deked version that was on um air like in the late 90s so mm-hmm. um so yeah that game um I, I remember playing it for a couple uh a weeks but I don't think I ever finished it but that was like the actual game I got my hands on and and um, of course I didn't know um uh developers and gaming at the time I'm just like I think it was like <laughs> young kid just like learning how uh things work and 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 the only thing I knew was was like yeah the creator of Sailor Moon Aoko uh, was the only person a name that I attached to anything created from Sailor Moon um but um I like the game if I remember correctly and I I did some digging around to see if that's even something I can download today I haven't found it yet but I'm sure it exists somewhere that now I feel like I can go back and and uh, see if there's a better version of it Just Mm because, yeah, I feel as fans, we've been kind of waiting for something (laughs) to happen in the last 10 years. And it's been super quiet. And um, I'm just also anxious to see if they they ever dive into creating a game of this, you know, story that we love. Yeah, no, it's same exactly here. Um, I actually, I think I found it online at some point. And someone just like kind of made like an online player version of it. Oh, and, cool! But it was um, this was years ago though, and I was okay. so sad though because like there was no way to really save because it was on a browser. Oh. I got pretty far, and it was just like, <laughs> well, now I got to shut down my computer because people didn't leave on computers back then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely didn't leave on the internet, and um, yeah. So I think I just like had to stop at some point, and then oh, I was no. just like, oh. <laughs> but, yeah, but it I was think, fun and i, I love yeah. how you said that you were um like you were looking for more story and it's kind of i yes. don't know it's kind of cheesy but you're like found another story <laughs> yes and it's like oh there's more characters in here that i've never heard before who are you and then i don't yeah. have anything other than like what they included in the game mm-hmm. yeah no i i totally am with you on that and i i've <laughs> 
it's been in the back of my mind to like look for a play, way to play it so I can actually finish it and like play it all the way through because uh, I think that'd be so much fun because there are a lot of Sailor Moon games out there that came out and it's just accessibility is the issue. Yes. Yeah, and mm -hmm. nothing ever got licensed and officially distributed here in the States other than the mobile game, if I'm remembering mm -hmm. correctly. Um, yep. And I, and I did do a, a bit of digging just to be like, oh, right, well, there were a bunch of other games too, but what were they? And then I forgot they were all pretty much like fighting games. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I'm like, well, all right, if you're, you love Tekken or Soul Calibur or Street Fighter, then yeah, for sure, that could be up your alley. But um, right. I felt like that doesn't give me enough uh, lore of what I was craving for. Yeah, that's how I feel too. So maybe, maybe one day. That makes maybe me one day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of leads me to my next question. Like, what? what's your dream Sailor Moon game? Oh my goodness. Um, I mean, we recently... Um, uh, launched the Dragon Ball Z Kakarot game um, last year and that pretty much was like um, I mean Dragon Ball was hand in hand for me like watching both Dragon Ball and Sailor Moon back to back was was one of the reasons why I, I love anime so much mm -hmm. um, so seeing that, that we were able to develop and publish this game um, that was pretty much like encompassing all of Dragon Ball Z's storyline from um, from like Goku and Gohan being, you know, father and son, and Gohan was an infant or toddler and grew right through up their whole um, a storyline of Dragon Ball Z, and the game pretty much encompassed all of that in one, you know, setting. Um, I I would love to have a version of that for Sailor Moon and be like, all right, how can we encompass maybe like the entire main plot at least of Sailor Moon and create a somewhat semi-open world <laughs> um, and you kind of reliving Sailor Moon um, uh, through the series but as a video game and then include other factors in there to kind of make it a little bit more fun and, and, and different. Um, so I think I think for me that would be kind of a really like I, the ideal <laughs> um, uh, nod to nostalgia and just to you know for us who are now in our 30s or <laughs> almost in our 40s that are that grew up with Sailor Moon um, the original the series that that can be definitely um, a huge huge hit but of course I'm not opposed that the game also introduces like more new characters and other stuff like that but I know that can be a very touchy subject for some people <laughs> who really want to make sure that it stays true to the 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 main story of the manga which is why i think there are uh, the whole reboot of the series was created in the first place right yeah yeah there's definitely people who have like strong feelings about many yeah. things but i think if, if naoko was involved like i don't i would love to see more characters right um, yeah me too like if it comes yeah. from her great right yeah 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 because yeah. i don't yeah i think but i just want anything more sailor <laughs> <laughs> just just more Sailor Moon in general. That's so cool though. Yes. I didn't know. Um, I just looked up the Dragon Ball Z game and I don't know why it kind of went over my head cuz I, I didn't come across this before, but this looks really cool. I really want to play it cuz I also like got into Sailor Moon at the same time as Dragon Ball Z during that like tsunami mm -hmm. block. I don't know if that's what you were talking about. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So like yeah, I like have a lot of nostalgia and love for Dragon Ball Z. Um, I don't love it as much as Sailor Moon, obviously, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do really like Dragon Ball Z. Like I, I yeah, yeah. It's it's part of my uh, anime origin story. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I love how you put that because it's yeah, it's the same with me. <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of that, I know we kind of touched on it, but is that your first memory of watching Sailor Moon? Like that tsunami block, or how did that go? Oh yeah. Um. All right, so I'm going to probably age myself a bit. It's all right. We're all so I believe I was <laughs> 13, <aged over> here. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and I don't know how to make sure that this is aligned correctly to the actual year I was 13. <laughs> it must have been 97, 98, or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it was the Cartoon Network tsunami block that w occurred um, like between 3 and 5 or something like that. Um and um, 
uh, that like Sailor Moon was was um, Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball, and then later on, I think Car- Cartu Sakura were like the first three shows that um, that were on air on TV that will like like every day that that made me want to just always be able to catch the latest episodes. So um, I taught myself how to use the VHS to record all the all, all the shows so that I wouldn't miss it. And then at the time um, I had a really long commute from school to, to the house and I had to take like a bunch of uh, public buses to, <laughs> to figure things out. So I think it took me like an hour and a half and I would always miss some of the shows and the episodes that aired so I just always I learned to make sure to record things and um so by the time I got home I was just super excited to just wait for everything to finish rewind the VHS tape and then rewatch everything at my own time um but yeah that was like I think um that was my first taste into the to, to Sailor Moon but like what got me into watching anime was like renting a tapes from blockbuster um and um and i think it was like movies like princess mononoke and then something i think it was a tenchi muyo movie as well and some Mm -hmm. other ones that first got me into like hey what is this and i love cartoons but this looks serious and (laughs) i love the drawings (laughs) and 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 it was my brother and sister and i that we would always just gravitate ourselves to rent the tapes right now we know what this is and then we saw similar looking animes or like animation styles on tv and so i'm like what is this it looks the same and then that's what kind of grab like grabbed our attention to to learn more about it and we were hooked like my brother and sister and i would would sit down and and all we did was focus and watch back to back the tsunami block that included both Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball and um yeah those were those were pretty happy times <laughs> um especially mm-hmm. being able to share that with my siblings and um and then growing this like fandom around <laughs> the, the these shows um and it was so different and and uh yeah that's that's how I first got my my introduction to Sailor Moon Oh, that's so cool. I love that. Especially like watching with your siblings. Like, you're right. They were such, like, happy, simpler times. <laughs> it was. <laughs> yeah. I love that you kind of talked about, because I think, like, a lot of people, you know, a lot of us started watching anime during that tsunami block, but we didn't really know it was anime at the time. There's always, yep. there's always like, that, like, second wave where you start to, like, like, oh, what is this? And, like, kind of get into a little bit more... <laughs> And you're like, oh, and then you realize, like, oh, anime, it's part of this, like, bigger thing. And mm-hmm. it's like, what's, here's your second uh, introduction into anime, almost. Yeah, exactly. Like, I didn't even yeah. know it originated from Japan um, mm-hmm. until, like, we got a computer with internet. And then that's when we started to find out a lot of things. And that was, like, <laughs> 98, 99. Um, right. And started to really dive into the to, to understanding where this came from what's it really called there's more story what you know and, and <laughs> wanting more and trying to find it yeah no there's nothing there's nothing like that feeling of finding out there's more sailor moon it's like yes. what <laughs> there's another <laughs> season there are movies <laughs> yes that was so like wow my mind exploded and um uh and, and learning that it was, you know, a Japanese, that got, like, my brother and I really, really interested to learn Japanese and figuring mm-hmm. out, like, all right, well, looks like there's fan subs, but then there's some that are, like, not translated, so it makes sense, right? We should learn Japanese so that we can watch Sailor Moon <laughs> and finish the show. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, at, at the time, I think um, I entered high school... And I was a freshman, and my parents moved and um, started a new high school where um, they did offer Japanese um, as Ooh. as a language you can take in high school. Because typically, I think it was like Spanish, French, and German, or or something mm-hmm. like that. But then this high school offered Japanese, and of course, my brother and I were like, "Let's do it! We cannot <laughs> wait!" And um, I was. I still remember her name. So her name, I don't remember her first name, but our, our Japanese teacher in high school, we call her Molette Sensei. And um, I thought she was the most coolest and 
person that I wanted to be because she was um, she was black. She taught Japanese. She also taught Spanish uh, in the same high school. And she allowed us to bring in the Sailor Moon R movie to show in class as one of our like free periods to kind of help people introduce um, Sailor Moon and also Japanese language into uh, into their lives. And it was the the subtitled version of the of the movie too. So um, now I feel super nostalgic. I want to look her up to see how she's doing. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, I remember that that was something we did, and uh, she never she didn't know about Sailor Moon at all, and that was her first exposure to it as well. And I remember making a joke, and she's a joke about the girls, of like <laughs> they're wearing school uniforms and fighting in high heels, and I'm like, yep, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I like about them. Okay. Little did I know, like, oh yeah, um. Uh, my my queerness is starting to kind of blossom at the time too and getting to know Sailor Uranus and Neptune I'm like what's going on here I want to learn more about them but um but yeah now I think I'm getting off topic <laughs> good I love that first of all teacher of the year right <laughs> that is oh, uh... best I would love to have brought Sailor Moon in for like the class to watch. <laughs> like, that would have been <laughs> awesome. Just watching it during a free period. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that is so cool. And it's so funny because like there's been a few um, guests on the show, and including myself, who are like, I want to learn Japanese specifically so I can watch anime <laughs> without subtitles. <laughs> and <it's>, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you know, priorities are in order over here. Right true <laughs> <laughs> and yeah yeah no and that queer representation is just amazing like yeah so good oh i love it um <laughs> you mentioned a few things but do you have any favorite like episodes or moments um what of, of sailor moon oh my goodness um <laughs> i mean i know that the so i'm gonna reference probably the um the original deke dub version because that's the one that I was like rewatching mm-hmm. constantly growing up and I know it's not the I mean I still like it just even though it's so badly dubbed and, and corny at times yeah. but um I mean the um, nostalgia is always going to be there and it's always going to be our, our first Sailor Moon you know I still love it too like I think there are oh, some good. things I actually like in the old deep dub better than the new one and there's some things I love like right. I love obviously like the uncut versions but there's some like dialogue I like in the original <laughs> still like I love Molly's Brooklyn accent. Like, yes, I know. It's classic. She reminds me so much of Brittany Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that. Oh, my God. I'm mad I never thought of that before. <laughs> oh, my God. Now I want, like, yeah. a Clueless Sailor Moon yes. crossover. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make it happen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I need it. <laughs> but, yeah, um, but, yeah. favorite moment? Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. Um. I, I do have to say, I mean, other than, like, the shock and, like, the ground uh, shaking of learning that Sailor Uranus and Neptune are not cousins. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I think my favorite overall of um, of what I, I experienced Sailor Moon at the time um, was the, I think it was a Sailor Moon R movie. Mm-hmm. Um Right the with roses? with um, the I the remember. male antagonist Friori. I don't know his. Yeah, name, yeah, that's name. R. No, yeah. you got it right. Um, I just at the time watching it, I'm like, okay, yeah, he's the bad guy. But then learning, you know, coming out and then and then um, really understanding more of the, the the Sailor Moon plot as an adult rather than a child, um, I was like, oh, he's in love with mom. M- Mamoru san and mm-hmm. I'm, and and like okay there's there was this film made for kids in Japan and of course right Sailor Uranus and Neptune's relationship that was just like yeah this is okay you know this is um this is normal and 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 no one's going to censor it you know until it gets here to the US but right. <laughs> but I'm glad they they've finally opened their eyes here and and allowed a lot of that to to be uncut and shown um but yeah i think um 
that 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 movie was one of my favorites aside from uh oh my gosh it's really hard to pick but i think because of that because there was some sort of representation of like boy and boy love that um um was super rare in Sailor Moon, right? Because it's super female uh, empowered, and I loved that. And that was, that was, you know, as a, as a as a little gay boy, that was something I gravitated towards too a lot. But then seeing them actually feature a somewhat male interest of of in, in the storyline, and I'm like, good, okay, because Darian needs something to do because he's just kind of useless most <laughs> of the time. <laughs> so. Um, so yeah, I'm glad they kind of did that, um, and I and I kind of wish they did a little bit more with, um, so the because I know in the beginning Queen Beryl and um, the henchmen, and I'm gonna totally butcher their names. It was oh, Zoisite, so, Kunzite, um, mm-hmm. right? Jedi. And I think the Jedi, yes. And then I think mm-hmm. the Deke version made one of them female, but an original. Mm-hmm. Um, he was male and they were in love but like i found out about that super late um Mm -hmm. uh, and and i was like i wish i knew that that's the original was was to keep this character um as a as a a male character Mm -hmm. that would have helped me a lot as a a kid growing up um but yeah i think my favorite moments are those queer sprinkles all over the story of Sailor Moon and how it was um, and just how it was kind of normalized throughout the 200 plus three movies that mm-hmm. that they created. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I guess that's what I would highlight. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's so true. Like it's it's shown as so like matter of fact almost. Yeah. It's just like, oh, this is just the story, but it's not like, a, oh, like coming out or like this like this is the major plot point it's just like no this is it's just yeah. a, a love story it's about a love triangle and <laughs> you know exactly and it's, it's just is what it is it wasn't yeah. surrounded by queer trauma other trauma but right. not specifically queer trauma <laughs> yeah <laughs> that, romantic um, trauma <laughs> exactly there we go <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and i think it was um uh Zoocyte was changed from a man to a woman, or they changed her voice, the voice, the yes. character, and uh, yeah. she was with Kunzite, or he was with Kunzite, I should say, actually. Yes, that's right. Yeah. that's right. And um, and uh, I was gonna say something else. Yeah, no, that movie um, R. It's funny because I've only ever watched, I only watched the censored version for a really long time, and then I ended mm-hmm. up watching the uncensored version when it came out in the movie theaters a few years ago. Oh, and yes. I'm watching it, and I'm like, I don't remember <laughs> being this quite queer. And I'm just like, were there always these like kind of like was it was it always right? like this? And I'm just yeah. like, my mind is just blown. And I'm watching my friend who like watched it for the first time and wasn't really as familiar with Sailor Moon, and he's like, oh, so I didn't know like Mamoru was was bi, and I was like, I didn't know either. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! I know. I think Sailor Moon is one of the the anime shows in general that I'm okay not to request to make it gayer because it's already super gay. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, yeah, there's so many new things that that I think I caught too, like you said. So it's always su- mm-hmm. super surprising. Yeah, well, I'm happy you're able to see that queer representation at least later on. You know. Oh yeah, for sure. Without the censorship. <laughs> um, <laughs> In the app. <laughs> I always joke that I think the only reason Stars was never brought over is because they couldn't figure out how to censor it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Stars. I think that, yeah. that definitely gave the <laughs> North American <laughs> publishers a, a round of, of a lot of thinking and discussion. And I'm like, yeah, there's definitely uh, probably no, no queer person, probably no person of color. And definitely lack of diversity in those rooms when Mm -hmm. (laughs) when that became a topic to discuss um but yeah i don't did we get a license we did right but it didn't air on tv i said our stars i'm i'm not sure i know it never aired on tv um i don't think they ever like you know brought it over it definitely never aired on tv but yeah i don't know if they ever got the license for it that i'm not sure i'm drawing a 
big old blank. They, I don't know if I would want to um, watch stars dubbed. <laughs> well, the I know, right? The original Deke never dubbed it. Um, and I think that's why. I think they're just like, we don't know how to censor this. This is, I don't know. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, and, but it did get dubbed with the new um, Viz Media um, oh, release. Right. And it's, you know, just like, and it's just, you know, it's uncut. It's not censored. Mm-hmm. It's the, uh, as it was originally meant to be told. Um, so yeah, so we have a we have a dub version now. If we want to multitask and watch Sailor Moon, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now I feel like I I should watch it for the first time in English dubbed to see how to see how it yeah. is. If there was any season that Scream trans writes, it's Sailor Stars. Yeah, it's definitely it's so great. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I forgot about Tiger's Eye and Fish Eye. Yeah. And Super S. Yeah, and how I think you, how, it's funny, huh? How would you say? I I never figured out how to say that season. Is it Super S or Supers? You know, it's funny. I recently actually learned this like a few months ago because I always said Super S, but someone recently would say it's Supers. Like, and in Japanese, I think like if you read it in Japanese, it's like Supers. So it is Supers, but the supers. S is just capital at the end just... for some reason. <laughs> Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I feel like both is fine. I might still say super S sometimes. Me too. Like... <laughs> Probably people are cringing over that right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it just sounds cool because you also have like R S and oh yeah, it's a super S. But yeah, no, I don't yeah. know. It just feels right. <laughs> but yeah, like you said, fish eye and um, uh, tiger eye, tiger's eye. Is I think it, I think it's tiger. There's yeah. three of them. Right, I'm like two of them were, were, we're together. Queer. You're queer. Yeah. And I yeah. think it's. I think actually the Deke version made um, yes. Fish Eye. Uh, they like didn't. Female. They were trying to censor, but they still got it like right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember gave... one episode didn't mm-hmm. make the cut because it showed it showed him without a shirt on. I'm like, okay, well, obviously here doesn't look mm-hmm. like a girl so we're gonna have to remove this episode completely yep 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 it's so they funny did a lot of that <laughs> they did yeah um yeah they they really like went through hoop, like so many hoops like oh, let's did. censor this as much as we can like to cutting down these episodes so much <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> oh, oh. American executives in the nineties. Um, I was actually I didn't ask you earlier too. Who's your favorite senshi? Oh my goodness! So for yeah. a long time, it was Sailor Mercury, just because I think, um, yeah, her birthday's in September. Mine is too. And at the mm. time, color blue was like my favorite color, and she had the coolest gadgets and, um. I started to really be come more attached to her the more I've like heard and found out like she's the weakest and the super isn't the super you know, like that, that strong compared to the others. Um, but there is something about her that just like felt likable and relatable for me growing up. And um, uh, so, yeah, she was always my default um, favorite but then recently, I don't know why, but Sailor Mars has been also kind of like bringing back up some, I don't know, maybe now that I'm a little older and I appreciate her seriousness <laughs> at times, especially when it becomes comes to, to balancing out Usagi's like temper tantrums and brattiness. Um, but I think... Um, it's it's now in in between or a tie between Mercury and Mars as my my favorites. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Yeah, Mercury's definitely like underrated for sure. <laughs> yeah, she's such a great character. Are you also a Virgo by any chance? A what? A Virgo? Oh, uh, no, I'm a Libra. Oh, okay, okay. I was yeah. wondering. I've been like trying to figure out. Apparently, like all the Sailor Scouts like match their like astrology oh. types and i was just like oh this is cool so i think mercury's a virgo which is also like a person who's yeah like studious and stuff um i'm just learning this recently i know nothing about <laughs> astrology so <laughs> is but... there is there a senshi that's a libra oh hmm maybe 
be Libra. When is Libra? Uh, end of September and big chunk of early October. Oh, I have to look. I know there's not one that's a Taurus, and it makes me sad because I'm a Taurus. Um, I have to look it up. I'll get back to you. I can't, okay. I can't think <laughs> I'll look it up my too. head right like, now. What? It's probably yeah. like Zarconia or some villain. Oh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, that is super cool, though. And there's totally, it's funny, you're not the first person who started out, um, loving sailor mercury and starting to like sailor mars which is it's funny because they seem kind of opposites but um i think like at least three people have kind of brought that up um really huh. yeah <laughs> so i'm like i feel like there's something there there's actually this an artist ray ami who uh you know obviously is named after sailor mars and sailor um, mercury um she named herself after her two favorite scouts which are ray and Aww. ami and I was just like, this is so cool. And she's she's doing really well. She just signed to like, I think I want to say Def Jam. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, cool. Yeah. Her. Yeah. So let me double check that. I think maybe not. <laughs> so, I don't know. So she's I... signed to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, uh, I looked it up. So Sailor Venus is October 22nd. Um, the last day in the Libra astrology sign. So she's a Libra. There you go. I also like Sarah Oh, she's Venus. Saw... <laughs> She is really great too. She's so cool. Yes. <laughs> she's just super uh, cool. I, I mean, I love Usagi, but um there's something about her that kind of annoys me <laughs> a little bit. Understandable. <laughs> but then Sailor Venus has like okay, it has a good, fun, perky qualities of Usagi, but like um has a I think has had more history or something, so that's why she's a little mm-hmm. bit more mature. <laughs> I could see that, yeah. I think she has, like, a lot more experience and, like, she's been doing this for a little bit longer and... Exactly. All the good things. And I messed up. She actually, she signed to Visionary Music Group, which is the same, which is Logic's, uh, thing, team, crew, company. <laughs> okay. And what's her name again? I want to look her up. Ray Ami. So, like, R-E-I space A-M-I. <gasps> Okay, yeah. cool. So she's really good. She's like R&B artist. I like her. Um, but yeah, but uh, yeah, I've been, it's just been interesting to see like a lot of people who, or not a lot of people, but like there's been like a few people who like Sailor Mars and Sailor Mercury, and I'm just like, there's something there. I don't know what. But there's something there. <laughs> yeah, maybe because they're like the first friends of Usagi, oh. and I don't know. That's a good point too. They are. Not as whiny. <laughs> also true. <laughs> also true. Yeah, I mean, Izagi's great, but she definitely has some uh, yeah, uh, things to work on. <laughs> yeah, I um, so my partner and I, we've been together for about three years now, and he's never watched any of the Sailor Moon series until he met me. <sighs> and um, one of the first things we did, of course, uh, I, I, he didn't watch the original one, so he watched the re the reboots that that were recently made, and he binge oh, watched those. Huh? Yeah, Crystal, Sailor Moon Crystal. Okay, and Got it. that was one of the first things he said after watching, I think, the first um, round of episodes, and he's like, "Usagi's a little prat." <laughs> <laughs> she is. Can't even lie. Like, she's my favorite, but she is a brat, <laughs> yes, especially in the yeah. beginning. But Especially I'm like, she, she grows. Give it a chance. Keep watching. Yeah. And then he, then then he met um, Chibi Usad, and he's like, okay, never mind. He's <laughs> fine compared to her. <laughs> right. She's the real brat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So true. Oh my god. Yeah. Chibi is <laughs> funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, that's that's so cool. I um are you guys planning to um watch sailor moon eternal once it oh. if it ever comes here yes i feel like we got so much buzz news about it and that like two months ago because i think it aired in japan right yeah or a month ago and mm-hmm. yeah i'm like where where is it i i don't want to look for it and download an illegal version of it either but i know i'm super close to doing that um yeah. but yeah i'm super excited try to watch very little um trailers and clips because i don't want to spoil it for myself 
Same here. And it's funny because it kind of know the story, but I still don't want to spoil it for yes, me. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but I feel the same way. I'm really excited about it. It, it looks really good. Like the art it and it just looks looks like it's going to be fun. Yeah, very, very pretty. Yeah, that's, yeah. Sailor Moon's so pretty. Um, <laughs> speaking of that, what, uh, what other anime do you like? Oh my goodness. Um... I mean, the classics, of course, I think I mentioned Cardcaptor, Sakura, and Dragon Ball were, like, definitely ingrained. I think those three I have the most merchandise and collectible items for um, around my, my office. And then, of course, throughout the years, fell in love with a bunch of other shows like Cowboy Bebop and... Um, um, uh, Tenchi Muyo was... Uh, I don't know why I still like that show, but I think it's more because it brings me back to my childhood days of watching them. Same. Um, <laughs> like, I, I have a little Ryoko stuffed animal somewhere up over here that I know, Ooh. like, um, it has been through, has seen some, <laughs> see some stuff, doesn't look that great, but, <laughs> oh. like, I'm super proud of this thing because it's old and nobody really has it. Um, mm. But recently, um, like huge fan of Yuri on Ice. Um, the music is great, and of course, I think because it's super gay <laughs> and it's anime, and I'm like, let's put these together. And that's like one of the shows that my partner and I binge watch. I think we watched it three times, and we go from original Japanese subtitle to dubbed, and then back to, <laughs> to whichever it. one we left off because um, um, and that's another anime that we're like just sitting around and waiting for the movie to 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 release because um um i know we're we're anxious to see more about the storyline between the the two main characters there mm -hmm. um and of course i think the other anime i would probably say that i love a lot is fruits basket and i'm glad that they did a reboot of it um mm -hmm. to stay a little bit more true to the manga um and and slice of life anime like that and it's super cute and if you need a show to make you cry if you need you know <laughs> if you need water in your eyes if you need <laughs> if you need to cleanse your your tears that's definitely a show worth watching um and um yeah i think those are those are the top ones um and, and there's other ones of course that i'm watching that um i love to keep um, my tabs on like My Hero Academia, mm -hmm. um, Attack on Titan, and then the new one that's kind of slowly coming out right now is called Wonder Egg Priority that is bizarre oh. and it is a whole new take of the magical girl genre that I've never experienced before. Highly recommend it just because it's so weird and somewhat disturbing and traumatizing. <laughs> Oh. I don't know how else to describe it, but it's still really good because I still don't know, have no idea what the main story or what where is it going. Like I don't know, but I'm, that's why I think I'm super on top of figuring out and watching it to know to to learn more. Yeah, I hear such good things about that anime, and I really want to watch it for all the reasons you just said. I'm just like, <laughs> what is this? I want to watch it. Um, yeah, I'm really curious about it. I might actually watch it today. Do it. Do I, it. I'm a uh, <laughs> gonna have an anime day already because I need to watch the final episode of Attack on Titan and then uh first the first episode of the new My Hero Academia season. Oh, so now I'm so like, oh, many. might as well just keep it going. <laughs> yes, keep going. <laughs> Don't stop. Yeah, <laughs> but like you said, yeah, so many. There's so many, but <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, you mentioned your Ryoko. Um, is that what we'd say is your favorite anime merch that you own? Oh, oh my goodness. Um, so we, I have, um, so my brother and I, uh, we're, we're a year apart, so he's a year older than me. And so we kind of went through this, like, um, like we put ourselves in somewhat, okay, yeah, I'm just gonna flatten side. We put ourselves in debt on trying to purchase <laughs> a bunch of things back in like the early 2000s that we really oh couldn't afford, mm -hmm. but like, definitely have sentimental value now um you know debt free <laughs> but um it's it's definitely a cherished item so he owned this for a good 
a couple years and then when he moved out he handed it over to me so it is a um I don't even know if it's actual official, but it is a, a, like a thick cardstock poster of the Sailor Senshi and manga um, style, and mm -hmm. um, it, it's pretty big. Like I have it framed and it's hanging on my wall, and I want to say it's like 30 inches by 25 inches, um, and it's of the group, like of the girls standing on top of this giant crystal piece. And behind them is the big old moon, and um, it almost looks like watercolor. I need to know the actual name of this thing. I never actually figured it out, but that I remember cost us like a hundred and fifty dollars, and it was like the last, the the last print. Like I said, I don't even know if it's an official mm -hmm. <laughs> merchandise product that we got from this store called Manga House that was located in a shopping mall in Orange County in Southern California. So like, my gosh, I remember the exact store name. That's crazy. And <laughs> <laughs> I love the and, details. <laughs> yeah, and he purchased it and um, we, he kept it sealed for a long time until like we had both moved out and he moved to his own place. And um, um, I think I kept it because he was moving around a lot. And then he just told me to, yeah, uh, keep it and I framed it and that's probably like the most I don't think it's the most expensive thing I have right now <laughs> compared to the other stuff that I got <laughs> that's um, around my office but that is probably my most favorite more most memorable piece um, just because it means a lot to my brother and I that's so cool that's so lovely I love that I love the story behind it I love that it's Sailor Moon yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't see a lot of manga posters at least I haven't um, so that is really cool too I'm trying yeah, to think if um, I'm I'll find that any. name and I'll let you know of yeah. what that pose is called, or at least a sample of it, so you know which one I'm talking about. Please do. If you can, like, I'd love to see a picture, too, if you don't oh, mind. Oh, yeah. I, duh, I can just do that. Like, <laughs> I don't even type in the search bar. <laughs> too many things show up. <laughs> yeah. Way too many. But, yeah. Oh, my God. I'm super excited to see what this is all about. Yeah, um, I'll snap a picture and I'll email it to you. Thank you. Um, and do you have any advice for someone who wants to become a social marketing and community leader at like an amazing company like Bandai Namco that creates all of our favorite games? <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, aside from, of course, knowing your, your stuff, right? Like really um, uh, digesting and consuming a lot of the content because that's, that's a big value, especially if you're going to go into... Um, community management of anything really like game industry anime or anything like that like make sure you have a lot of knowledge about the thing that you want to do or speak on behalf of so like um you know reading the manga or the the books or watching the anime or the tv or playing the video games that's going to give you a wealth of knowledge of um that will go hand in hand with how you um with what you know about how to, um, you know, manage social media. Um, I know that, that that can be easy, especially when a lot of us have personal accounts. It is a different skill set because other than like occasionally posting and creating content for yourself, um, social and community, um, when you do it for a business, um, you definitely need to have some, some, some degree of knowledge that can give you... Um, the skills on putting plans together and understanding um, general metrics of social media. So like know what um, engagements and reach and impressions mean. Um, learn how to um, uh, uh, also be uh, in a position to um, represent the brand, right? So you need a level of professional communication skills so that you know you um, you don't sound like <laughs> like you're an individual because if you're going to be talking to people based on a brand account like Bandai Namco US or if you're working on a specific game in the future um, that is around um, that uh, that title that you love or that manga that you read um, um, learning learning how to um, 
professionally, but then also still be tied to um, the the references of the of the story or of the voice of the story. I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, yeah. And and I I think where I'm I'm trying not to 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 direct. Uh, my advice to be like you need to sound like a professional business person that's definitely not <laughs> what uh, I hope that that I'm not coming off as but there is a level like you need to have some sort of business um, sense tied to pop culture and like all right here are here's the middle place between the two and that's going to be the representation and voice that you will need to learn how to communicate and speak to people who are following um the social media channel or community that you're running. So um, however you can manage to get yourself to learn about that, that definitely um, uh, can be taught uh, at an entry level job. So like um, for the team for us would be like a community coordinator position. So like if that's, uh, that's the title or position that you, uh, if you're looking to start somewhere was where I would recommend to be like searching for and um, so those are going to be the positions where you're going to learn a lot and it's expected to you not to know a whole lot of what the ins and outs are and um, um, just need to you know sell yourself and be given the opportunity to learn a lot and uh, that would be kind of like my recommendation is look out for those postings or internships any internships and in community teams or social management teams highly recommend starting off with there if you just want to learn how things um, are put together and how you run a social media channel if uh, from a brand or company perspective yeah no it makes a lot of sense i feel like you're like saying like you know, you can geek out, but still keep it professional. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, that makes that makes all the sense. I think people think like, oh, I'm like working for a nerd brand. I can just like do whatever. And it's like, no, mm-hmm. we still have to be like professional. And yeah, no, that makes that makes all the sense. And internships are great. Um, yes. Well, good internships are great. But yeah, <laughs> not every internship, but internships are great. Um, yeah, we need more yeah. of them. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And just like, so we kind of mentioned before how like some of the Deke version had some good things. And one of the things I really like is the Sailor Moon Says uh, (laughs) (laughs) segment at the end that they added. (laughs) So I'm going to ask you, just like Sailor Moon had the Sailor Moon Says phrase at the end of every episode, what would your phrase be? So Sailor Javier Says. (laughs) Sailor Javier Says to love yourself and always make sure that... um, what you do is purposeful and meaningful and um, uh, what you put out there is something that um, if it comes from a positive and um, uh, uh, point of view and it's filled with love it's 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 going to it's going to be heard and it's going to be looked at and people recognize you as um, um, a loving individual but um, yeah, I'm going kind of cheesy with this, but <laughs> I feel like I think, especially during these times, um, that's it's really, really tough to even remember to do um, when we're all, you know, trying to pull through a lot of the socioeconomic issues and um, uh, we forget about what we, how how to take care of ourselves and love ourselves. And, and um, it, it, it kind of goes hand in hand with what Ru- RuPaul says, <laughs> <laughs> and in drag race right it's like how if you can't love yourself how are you going to love someone else and i know i'm kind of stealing that from rue but um uh i feel like that would be an awesome thing if it couldn't be said directly from sailor moon as well and like heard by more people so um uh, but me as an individual definitely would end with like yeah just love yourself don't forget to love yourself yeah that's such an important message like you said especially now as we've been dealing with a, a long year. <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah. I love it. And cheesiness is always accepted on the Sailor Moon Fan Club <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Um, and then what's next for you and where can people find you? Oh, um, mm-hmm. next for me, um, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I'm going back to work tomorrow um, yeah. uh, <laughs> to the grind of things. But um uh, I mean, I still have uh, things that I definitely want to do 
on my spare time and um, uh, when I do have the energy to to share what I'm doing whether it be um, teaching myself how to crochet little amigurumi things um, for my niece I, I'm so behind on it I'm trying to make a unicorn for her um, mm. and um, could definitely see if I succeed in actually making it <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm on Twitter and Instagram as Adon Rico um, and um, I'm usually posting a couple of things there about my my partner, myself, my dog Riley, and um, sometimes like, hey, I got a new figurine. Here's what it looks like, and I'll share it there for for friends to to comment on there. Um, and then on Twitter, I do kind of share some of the professional things we do at work, especially our live streams. So um, uh, check us out there. I will be on live stream for the Bananamco US Twitch channel next Tuesday, or no, this coming Tuesday. Um, mm. So you'll get to see me there um, uh, with my team as well. We're introducing someone new who just joined us about a month ago. So really excited about that. And awesome. um, yeah, and I think later today we're going to go get, we're going to make some brunch and have some mimosas. Oh, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I want that too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's awesome. Uh, that sounds fun. And I think this episode might come out after that um, live stream, oh, okay. but I'll link to it um, below in the in our description. Um, and I'll definitely watch it. I'll tweet about it as well. So you guys can oh, check it out you. if you follow us and follow Javier. And um, yeah. Oh, actually, I meant to ask you earlier. Did you ever get good at, at Japanese? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I did. <laughs> Ooh. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I mean, high school. I think uh, my brother and I took a year, but then we, my parents moved, so um, we moved to Southern California, and um, I finished high school there. And they didn't offer Japanese, but um, I went to community college and took three years of Japanese there, um, and learned the basics. Kept some knowledge of phrases and, and kanji that I still really benefit from today um and um that helped me uh i've been to japan twice and um uh did some sightseeing and, and touring over there loved it more <laughs> more money was spent um and uh <laughs> but i don't regret it <laughs> but um yeah. it, it has helped me um uh today right speaking and i became kind of somewhat of like my teacher in high school molet sensei because um I mean, um, I'm Mexican American, so my first language was Spanish. So learning, learn, speak Spanish fluently, and on top of that, now have some knowledge of Japanese. I wouldn't say fluent; definitely say like intermediate or elementary level. Um, but uh, wow, yeah, I just realized that I I, <laughs> I achieved to be somewhat like my my teacher back then. Um, so yeah, that's helped me speak to a lot of our Japanese counterparts um, at uh, where I work, and um, very very casually, but um, uh, it has helped me to become a better um, uh, uh, person working for a Japanese company. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. I love that. I love a success story. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that either until now. <laughs> I love the full circle moment too. Wow, Just like, a lot of realizations coming up. <laughs> yeah, it's like Oprah. <laughs> uh, yes, <laughs> you know how to pull it out from people. You're so right? good at talking. Yes, yes. <laughs> working on it. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, since he's our last question, since he said he went to Japan, did he get to go to uh, Azabu Juban? Oh no! Or because mm. I went, I went once in twenty. 2005 and then my second time mm. in 2009 okay. um so it was a while ago i haven't been back in over 10 yeah. years oh my goodness i still want to yeah. go back there's still so many things i want to do um yeah and um i know there's the sailor moon show that it, they don't do anymore that i'm super mm -hmm. sad um but um but i know there's a lot more uh sailor moon related like activities and sightseeing to do now than there was back then especially with the anniversary and the reboot happening in the last few years so um definitely on our plans to go back to japan and experience all of it i did i did go i get a chance to visit the studio ghibli museum 
oh, the little park so. back then before it became really overly popular and, and hard <laughs> to get in. Um, that that is another <laughs> another memory I, I cherish, and um, it was I was so sad because it was towards the end of my trip where I had very little money, so I couldn't buy all of the things. Um, but I took a lot of pictures and um, kept some souvenirs, um, like the ticket and um, all that, like paraphernalia yeah. and stuff like that that I saved <laughs> in a little book somewhere. <clears throat> oh, but, that's um, so cool. Yeah. yeah. I went in 2017, and uh, I didn't also didn't get to do everything, but I did go to Juban, and that was really cool to like be where like the Sailor Scouts, like quote-unquote, live, oh, or where nice. Usagi lives. Yeah. But um, I didn't get to go to the show and but i really want to go back and i feel like all like sailor moon fans need to just like pick a day pick a week and we just all go together <laughs> let's invade japan yeah. <laughs> uh, attack. We'll yeah send the sailor moon airplane and we can definitely begin our fun trip oh there oh my gosh that would be everything <laughs> <laughs> the dream right yeah yeah <laughs> Well, as I dream about that, once again, I am Victoria L. Johnson, host of the Sailor Moon Fan Club podcast, and you can find me at Miss Old School, it's Old School with a K, and you can find the podcast at Moonies Club on Twitter, and Moonies underscore club on Instagram, and thanks for listening, Moonies! Thanks, Javi, for coming on the show! No, thank you! Love being here! Loved having you! (laughs) Bye, Moonies!